Welcome to How to Get a Green, a presentation by the Sacramento County Environmental Management Department. The Environmental Management Department is your source for all the information regarding state and local requirements for food safety, as well as training for food handlers and operators. This video will teach you about the five most common major food violations that contribute to foodborne illness and show you what you can do to get a green placard. A green, or pass placard, is handed out at the end of a successful health inspection. Let's begin by discussing the three-color placard system. The Sacramento County Environmental Management Department has implemented a color-coded placard system to simplify the results of food facility health inspections. The placards are three colors, similar to a traffic light. A green, or pass placard, is issued when a facility has one or no major violations. If one major violation is identified, it must be corrected immediately. Generally, no reinspection will be conducted when a pass placard is issued. A yellow or conditional pass is issued when two or more major violations are found during an inspection. These violations must be corrected before the inspector leaves, and a reinspection will occur within 72 hours. If no major violations are observed during the reinspection, a green pass placard will be issued. Red is issued when there is an imminent health hazard and will result in a closure of the facility. Some examples of imminent health hazards are sewage backing up, rodent or insect infestation, lack of water or hot water, no electricity, or severe unsanitary conditions. The placards are issued after every inspection and reinspection and must be posted within five feet of the main entrance and remain there until the next inspection. Inspectors from the Sacramento County Environmental Management Department will conduct the inspection. In addition to inspections, the inspectors are excellent resources and are able to provide food safety education. They are also able to advise food facility operators on how to comply with regulations. Free on-site safety training is also available. For more information on the free services provided by the Sacramento County Environmental Management Department, go to www.emd.saccounty.net. Major violations are based on risk factors that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have identified as most likely to cause a foodborne illness. These risk factors include the hygiene of food handlers, holding temperatures, cooking temperatures, food contamination, and food from unsafe sources. These are the risk factors that you will want to be aware of to ensure that the food you are serving to your customers is safe. You are protecting the health of your customers and ensuring your facility does not receive a red closure placard during health inspections. Let's talk about the first of the major violations, the hygiene of food handlers. Food handlers have direct contact with the food the customers eat and can easily spread bacteria and viruses from our bodies and the environment. That is why it is extremely important that all food handlers practice good hygiene. Simple things can help prevent the spread of foodborne illness, such as washing your hands before you begin work, before going back to work from a break or the bathroom, and changing your gloves when working with raw foods. It will be noted as a major violation if hand washing stations are not stocked with soap, hand towels, or hot and cold water. It is also a major violation if they are not easily accessible. This could include items blocking the sink or equipment stored in the sink. If an employee handles raw chicken and then handles ready-to-eat fruits and vegetables without washing hands in between or prepares food with dirty hands or nails, it is also a major violation. An employee must wear gloves if they have any type of bandage, sores, rashes, nail polish, or rings other than a plain wedding band. If there is a change in task or the gloves become contaminated in any way, the gloves must be thrown away, hands washed, and a new pair of gloves must be used. Maintaining a clean, well-stocked bathroom is also important in preventing foodborne illness. Major violations would include having no toilet paper available, or having no soap 
or paper towels available for hand washing. If an employee has symptoms of vomiting or diarrhea, they can't legally work in a food facility. This would be marked as a major violation. Staying home when you are sick can help prevent the spread of foodborne illness. Decide if the following statements are true or false. Before work or after returning from the bathroom, food handlers must wash your hands. True. All employees must wash your hands before beginning or returning to work in order to not spread bacteria or viruses from their bodies or the environment. Food handlers can work while sick if they wash your hands frequently. False. It is a major violation for a sick food handler to work and it is against the law for a food handler to work in a food facility if showing symptoms of vomiting or diarrhea. It is not necessary to wash hands or change gloves when switching between raw meats and ready-to-eat foods. False. Not washing your hands or changing gloves when switching between working with raw meats and ready-to-eat foods can spread harmful bacteria to food and customers. Employees coming to work while sick have contributed to some of the largest foodborne outbreaks in Sacramento County. Certain foods, such as meats, cooked rice, and beans, are more likely to support the growth of bacteria and cause foodborne illness. Because of this, it is important to hold these foods at a sufficiently high or low temperature. To minimize the growth of bacteria, food must be kept at less than 41 degrees Fahrenheit or more than 135 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature range between 41 and 135 degrees Fahrenheit is referred to as a danger zone. If food is in the danger zone for more than four hours, it must be thrown out. Major violations will be noted when a potentially hazardous food is held between 51 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. To ensure proper cold holding temperatures are maintained, all refrigeration units should have a display thermometer in the warmest part of the refrigerator. When cooling hot foods to be stored, they must be rapidly cooled to ensure that food is in the danger zone for as little time as possible. There are several ways to cool hot foods, such as placing the food into a shallow pan, ice bath, or both, and stirring frequently. A hollow container filled with water and then frozen, known as a chill stick, can also be used. Whatever methods are used, hot foods should be cooled to 70 degrees Fahrenheit in two hours and then to 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below within four hours. Temperature and time control are also very important to monitor when food is being thawed. Here's how to safely thaw food. In a refrigerator, which may take a day or two and requires advanced planning, under cool running water for less than two hours with the water running across the entire surface of the food being thawed. Thawing as part of the cooking process, which works well for items like frozen pot stickers or in a microwave oven as part of a continuous cooking process, which is best used on items such as frozen burritos. A major violation would be documented if raw chicken was thawing on a countertop in the danger zone. Which group of food is potentially hazardous when in the danger zone of 41 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit? Group one, uncooked rice, pickled ginger or kimchi, whole raw vegetables and fruit, soy sauce, tortilla chips. Group two, cooked beans, sliced cantaloupe, garlic and oil, cooked noodles, cooked rice. Group two, these items have moisture, proteins or starches and can support the growth of bacteria. Which of the following methods of thawing food will result in a major violation? 
thawing in a refrigerator, running cool water over the entire surface of the food for less than two hours, thawing as part of the cooking process, thawing meat on a countertop at room temperature. Thawing meat on a countertop at room temperature. Food should be rapidly thawed to ensure it is within the danger zone for as little time as possible. Foodborne illness causes 3,000 preventable deaths every year. Many raw foods already contain bacteria on them and need to be cooked thoroughly to make it safe for consumption. Different types of food must be cooked to different temperatures as required by CalCode. The following cooking temperatures must be reached for each of these foods. Eggs, food containing eggs, and pork must be cooked to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Ground beef and food containing ground beef must be cooked to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. And chicken, turkey, and any other poultry must be cooked to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition, anytime food is reheated, the temperature must be rapidly reheated to reach 165 degrees Fahrenheit. A steam table or warmer must not be used to reheat food. If food is being held within the danger zone, bacteria on the food can produce toxins that cannot be killed by reheating at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. To check that the internal temperature of food has reached the required temperature, a probe thermometer should be used. A thermometer with a range of 0 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal. Each of the food groups has a required temperature they must reach during cooking. Can you name each temperature? Eggs, food containing eggs, and pork, 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Ground beef and food containing ground beef, 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Chicken, turkey, and any other poultry, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Before using a thermometer, make sure it is calibrated properly. Thermometers may be calibrated by the ice point or boiling point method. For the ice point method, Fill an insulated container, such as a foam cup, full of crushed ice. Add cold water and allow the mixture to come to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Insert a metal stem thermometer into the center of the cup. For the boiling point method, submerge the sensor into boiling water and wait until the needle stops. Use pliers to turn the calibration nut until the thermometer reads 32 degrees Fahrenheit for the ice point method or 212 degrees Fahrenheit for the boiling point method. Many foods have bacteria on them that will be destroyed during the cooking process. It is important that these foods, juicers from these foods, or equipment used to prepare these foods not come into contact with food that has already been cooked or will not be cooked before being served. If contact does occur, then that food will be considered contaminated and can spread foodborne illness to customers. If a cutting board that was used to cut raw chicken was then used to cut lettuce without being sanitized in between, that lettuce would be contaminated with the bacteria of the chicken. If raw meat juices dripped onto cooked food or produce in the refrigerator, it would also be an example of contamination. To reduce the chance of contamination, always keep produce and ready-to-eat foods above and away from raw meat products when stored in a refrigerator or freezer. Food preparation equipment, such as meat slicers, should be disassembled, cleaned, and sanitized whenever switching between slicing raw products and ready-to-eat products. If the same type of item is being sliced throughout the day, the slicer should still be disassembled, cleaned, and sanitized every four hours. If a slicer has food accumulated on it that is over four hours old, that is a major violation. Knives and cutting boards must also be cleaned regularly and stored in a sanitary location to prevent cross-contamination. 
Containers used for food storage must also be cleaned and sanitized properly before being used. Containers that previously stored any non-food item should not be used for food storage. The key to preventing food contamination is having a good system of cleaning and sanitizing in place. Let's look at how to hand wash dishes in a three compartment sink. If no dishwasher is used or if it breaks down, the three compartment sink can be used for washing all equipment and utensils. In the first compartment of the sink, dishes should be washed in hot soapy water. The second compartment should be used to rinse the dishes with warm water. The third compartment should be filled with sanitizer and water at the appropriate concentration. Dishes should be soaked in the sanitizer water and then air dried. Surfaces must also be sanitized regularly. Wiping towels are required to be kept soaking in containers of sanitizer solution whenever they are not in active use. Hot water can also be used and is required to be at or above 180 degrees Fahrenheit to achieve sanitization. Major violations would be noted. If an employee skips the sanitizing step while washing dishes, if a dish machine is being used with no sanitizer, if a high temperature dish machine is not reaching 160 degrees Fahrenheit at the plate, which is 180 degrees Fahrenheit at the manifold, if a surface is observed to be contaminated. To prevent major violations, always check sanitizer levels using a test strip. There are different test strips for checking chlorine and quaternary ammonia concentrations. The test strips should be used daily to check sanitizer concentrations at the three compartment sink, dishwasher, and in sanitizer towel buckets. Having a safe supply of hot and cold running water and plumbing fixtures that are in working order are crucial to running a sanitary food establishment. Major violations would be noted and a red placard would be issued if the water supply has been cut off, the hot water heater isn't working, if surfacing sewage is noted, or if the toilets don't work. When an inspector evaluates general cleanliness of a facility, they are looking for dirt, grease, and or food buildup resulting from insufficient cleaning practices. If buildup is so severe that food cannot be prepared in a sanitary manner, a major violation will be documented. Infestations of rodents, cockroaches, or other insects such as flies represent a major violation. Live cockroaches or the presence of rodent feces is a major violation. Live cockroaches are evidence of an infestation and the establishment could be closed. If rodent feces are fresh and are located in more than one location, the facility could be closed. Other prevention strategies include keeping all doors and windows closed unless completely screened. There should be no gap around the door greater than a quarter inch. Seal up all food at night and clean up any food debris. Keep floors as dry as possible. Keep glue boards along the walls to monitor for any rodent or insect activity and check them regularly. Any pesticide must be applied by a licensed pest control operator. Decide if the following statements are true or false. Cross-contamination is when cooked or ready-to-eat food comes into contact with raw, uncooked food that can contain bacteria. True. Food preparation equipment such as meat slicers, cutting boards, and knives don't need to be sanitized when switching from raw products to ready-to-eat products. False. You can make a sanitizing solution by combining chlorine bleach with water or by combining quaternary ammonia and water. When making a bleach sanitizing solution, add a cap full of bleach to about one gallon of water. Quaternary ammonia usually comes in a tablet form or as a pink liquid. Read the instructions on the label for dilution standards. Every food facility must be able to identify the source of foods it prepares. 
If a food facility cannot identify the source of the food that is being prepared, it is considered unsafe to serve. Look for appropriate labels on food products such as the USDA insignia. Food prepared in a private home is also considered to be from an unsafe source. Next, it is important to check that the supplier is delivering your food in wholesome condition. If a frozen food shows evidence of thawing, it should not be accepted. If produce shows any signs of insect infestation, it should also not be accepted. Food that has already been served to another customer is also an example of food from an unsafe source. Any food that has been placed out on a table for consumption cannot be reserved to customers in any form. Examples of major violations would include reusing leftover bean sprouts or unwrapped fortune cookies from one table to new customers at a different table, leaving the same bowl of salsa on a table and topping it off when new customers sit down, serving or selling foods such as rice cakes, tamales, or beans that were prepared at a private home, or serving duck that was obtained from a hunting trip. Decide if the following statements are true or false. Food grown in a private home can be served at a restaurant. False. Only food from a source that can be approved and verified may be served in a food facility. Untouched food that has been served to one customer may be served to another customer. False. Once food has been served, it may never be served to another customer or used in any cooking process. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that there are 48 million cases of foodborne illness every year. Understanding these five major violation categories will ensure the safety and quality of your food, as well as the health of your customers. Remember, it is the responsibility of every person that works at a food facility to reduce the risk of foodborne illness. For additional information or training at your facility, the Sacramento County Environmental Management Department is here to help. Your inspector is a helpful resource to help you answer all food safety questions. Contact them directly or go to www emd.saccounty.net for more information and to learn about the free services they offer. Thank you for watching.